Hello guys, welcome back to RX Vix Pathology. This is Dr. Anjit. And in this video, we are going to discuss clearly about lungs histology, right? So for every person who wants to excel in pathology, the first step is to master histology. If you know everything about histology, learning pathology kind of becomes much easier. So I'm going to discuss actually about two different parts in lung. One is about the bronchial, bronchiolar anatomy or the histology and also about the alveoli. Alveoli is not much thing difficult. It's pretty simple. The bronchial, bronchial wall, the bronchial lining is something which I want you to understand a little bit more better, fine. So when you take lung, so let's assume I have a bronchus here. Okay, and multiple places surrounding them you have multiple tiny 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 alveoli so these are alveolar sacs or alveoli whatever you can call or anything beyond the terminal bronchiole is termed as an alveoli the bronchus and the bronchiole histologically they are pretty much simple the primary difference is going to be size bronchiole is something less than one millimeter we call it a bronchiole and most of the time when you see adjacent alveoli the ident the mostly the structure there is a bronchiole fine so here bronchiole will always be having a blood vessel underneath that's a bronchovascular bundle that's what we call them if you look at the bronchus or the bronchiole i'm going to primarily draw it as a bronchiole because we have the adjacent alveoli here fine so the lining epithelium is pretty much simple and at the same time there are multiple cells which i want you to remember so that you don't make a mistake whenever you see a histology of lung so one i'll have a beautiful normal tall columnar epithelium with a pseudo stratification ciliated right so stratification is this so we have multiple layers we call it a stratification multiple layers of cells we call this pseudo stratified because it's actually not stratified but one nucleus will be here one nucleus will be here one nucleus will be here and might when it's kind of compressed kind of looks like multiple layers it's a pseudo stratification because of the nucleus and not multiple cell layers single layer only right in between you'll have some mucin secreting cells the mucin secreting cells how you can identify is you can have good amount of mucin here you'll have a nucleus here the mucin secreting cells or the mucus cells will not have cilia okay so you have the ciliated epithelium that's one in between them you will have a mucus secreting cells without cilia right that's a very classical finding which is seen in every bronchial lining we'll definitely look at them when we look at a histology slide right wait till the last don't just skip the thing in between we look at a normal slide normal histology and they'll read everything what you read here right at the same time let's draw a little bit more here just to understand these are the ciliated epithelium fine so actually bronchial lining is kind of made of two layers one is the topmost layer which is the epithelium the below that we have something called basal layer right so what happens here is the basal layer i'm just erasing this just for a second fine now you have good amount of these are called as basal cells kind of high in c ratio like a normal stem cells the basal cells is also a very important layer in case of bronchus, right? The basal layer. So the basal layer, as you know, every basal layer is the one which gives stemness to any epithelium, kind of regenerates everything after damage. The most important thing is amidst between this basal layer. It's very difficult for an in a eye to identify in a HNE, but in between this layer is where we have your neuroendocrine cells or the Colchin cells, right? Generally, a, a thing is that neuroendocrine cell will have a little bit of clear cytoplasm, but not much. Sometimes very, very difficult uh, to identify. In between that, you have your Kulchinsky cell. So Kulchinsky cell is supposed to be the origin of carcinoid, the neuroendocrine tumor. Basal epithelium can give rise to squamous or your uh, pseudocytopic columnar based on the insult injury. So you can have your squamous cell carcinoma, you can have your adenocarcinoma, mucin secreting carcinoma and also neuroendocrine carcinoma coming from the bronchus, right? So below that you'll have the bronchial glands, if you can see mucus secreting glands and also cartilage in between that, below that, right? So this is how normal bronchial mucosa looks like. Now, if you look at the alveoli, like I said, alveoli is pretty, pretty simple structure. Most of the time, again, I'm talking about a normal lung, alveoli will be separated by a very thin fibrous septa. The space between the alveoli will not be much. In a normal lung, you won't see anything. If it's fibrotic, yes, you might have spaces, right? The lining epithelium of alveoli, we know the normal ones, type 1, type 2. The type 1 helps in the air gas exchange and type 2 does the your surfactant sense and everything, right? Type 1 is very, very, very flat. The type 1 is very flat. You'll have a tiny nuclei. That's what you'll see. It's a very, very flat one. That's your type 1 of your alveolar epithelium. The type 2 has a little bit of projection here. In a normal lung, it's pretty difficult to see a type 2. This projection or the projecting nuclei, we call this a hobnail appearance. Hobnail appearance is a very classical finding for a type 2. And in the septa, right, you where you see the capillaries. That's where your air gas exchange happens. 
in a normal lung pretty much you won't have anything it's kind of a back to back to back to back arranged alveoli that's all and one more important finding if you carefully observe there are multiple places where the alveoli appears to be connected there may be gaps in between i'm sure you must have read them right alveoli are connected between uh, via one another i want to comment what is that pore called as i'm sure most of you must have known that right okay so this is what the normal alveolar architecture is let's kind of go into our slides and let's see if we can diagnose something here today fine let's learn something today fine this is a perfect lung biopsy a normal histology of lung biopsy i have taken from the rsdx app we'll update all these slides very very soon don't worry your slides and learning of pathology sorted with us fine look at this this is a bronchovascular bundle fine bronchus the muscle here which i missed it the bronchial glands the cartilage here the vessel it's always bundled right let's look at this here a big bronchus you can see the cartilage cut section there you will definitely have a vessel that's a pure perfect bronchovascular bundle right now let's see if we can see those cells what we identified i cannot zoom beyond this but i'm pretty much sure that you can see the ciliated epithelium there's no doubt in that right look at the ciliated epithelium there's a columnar epithelium can you see the basal layer absolutely right there's a basal layer they're definitely there here this has been stripped off but the only thing what you can see is a very thin basal layer right let's go to the other one the reason why i like this is it's a bit more spread out right it's not like uh, uh very congested it's more spread out so you can appreciate certain things much better here look at this a beautiful pseudo certification one second third fourth fifth these are all one 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 columnar epithelium the only thing is it's on different level so we call it pseudo certification perfectly beautiful mucin secreting mucin secreting mucin secreting mucin secreting mucin secreting right the mucin secreting epithelium is actually not ciliated the columnar epithelium is the one which has cilia i'm sure you can appreciate the tiny cilia here right you can definitely appreciate the tiny cilia here good amount of mucin secreting epithelium right perfect again cilia here perfect great i actually i'm not sure if you're able to appreciate this in this juncture there's a dip if you can see there's a beautiful cilia here these are the pseudo certified epithelium but i have a mucin secreting epithelium there's no cilia over this don't confuse with this which is directing here that's from this cilia it's been directing here but wherever there's a mucin secreting cell you won't have a overlying cilia right perfect the next thing like i said most of the time you tend to ignore a bronchial basal layer you have a beautiful layer of single extremely dark nuclei it's a bit difficult to identify kulchinsky cell but if you have a little bit of cytoplasm like this it's termed as kulchinsky but it's it's really really difficult to identify them look at them it's a beautiful layer of your basal layer right look at this basal epithelium basal epithelium basal epithelium very high end cd issue right and below that you have the bronchial smooth muscle bundle okay you will definitely have the bronchial glands though we're not seeing much of them here look at this because secreting glands of bronchus obviously and the cartilage here right so this is a perfect bronchovascular bundle what's fun if you don't learn about the alveoli right so then alveoli like i said i asked you a question these are the pores of can connecting from one alveoli to another connecting from one alveoli to another right they will be connecting they are not like individual separate structures they'll definitely be connecting and if you look all these are individual alveolar sacs though they are connected they are individual they are adjacent to each other there's no interstitium no prominent interstitium seen in normal alveoli fine okay if you zoom in tiny tiny capillaries in between these are the capillaries where the air gas exchange happens very flat type 1 epithelium extremely flat type 2 we have to search a little bit i might call this a type 2 though not exactly easy for you to identify them it's projecting a little bit look at this see this is a flat layer it's projecting a little bit it'll be very subtle projection as your type 2 epithelium with a hobnailing appearance if you see a patient with a diffuse alveolar damage you can see it much prominent than in a normal alveoli i'm just searching for you to look show you a perfect hobnail though i can see quite a few of them wait 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 okay flat 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 projecting that's a hop name as a classical projecting hop name if you find some more i'll definitely help you out but projecting hop name can be easily seen these must be the macrophages which is then the alveoli that's co pretty common pulmonary alveolar macrophages i think this might help you to understand a little bit better though not amazingly but yes it's projecting inside 
projecting inside right that's a projecting type 2 epithelium and most of them flat are type 1 epithelium you will have definitely a little bit of rbc's inside it could be traumatized because of the post-mortem biopsy right okay that's how a normal lung biopsy and a normal bronchial epithelium looks like if you like the video click the subscribe button share it to a friend who needs to learn about the normal and download the rxjs app let's excel pathology see you soon bye bye